Hey everyone, it's Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today I want to show you how I'm breeding cherry shrimp. Now I do it the same way in every tank. This is a tank I set up specifically to do the cherry shrimp and it's been a long time in the making and today it's time to shoot the video. So let's take a look. So down here we have a basic 20 gallon tank. Initially I put up some substrate in there, didn't matter. Then I put a sponge filter in and that's what I use there. I use a sponge filter. I always try to use sponge filters. If I'm going to use a hang on back, I will use something that has a sponge on the intake so it doesn't suck up the babies. From there, I want to grow a ton of algae. So that's the goal, is get tons and tons and tons of algae growing. Uh, maybe it would be something like this tank up here where you've got algae all around. That's exactly what cherry shrimp want to feed on. They want to live off that algae. So when you have that going on in there, it works out really nice. Uh, so I got that going. I put a sprig of moss in there. This is some uh, uh, Christmas moss, I believe. But it could be java moss, it could be anything. Just live plants in general, doesn't really matter. You know, in this tank over here that I'm breeding blue velvets, we've got some dwarf aquarium lilies and stuff like that. But uh, I did put a cycled sponge in there, but that sponge was from a dirty filter, okay? And what I did is I brought it in and I wrung it out in there so that brown mulm went all over everything. It, the tank looked terrible for about three days. And that was to seed the aquarium so that it could, uh, you know, get enough bacteria and things going so that shrimp would be able to thrive in there. And that's what shrimp want to eat. Shrimp want to eat uh, bacteria, microscopic algae, microscopic organisms, and stuff like that. So, in my opinion, shrimp do best in a symbiotic relationship. Now, what does that mean? That means they rely on something else. I find they do best when they can eat on fish poop. The problem is, everyone would say, well, fish eat shrimp. That's true. It's a great food source for the fish as well. So we have to create an environment that makes it so that the shrimp can get away from the predators. So in here, I've got teacup platies at the moment. Those actually went in, you know, I want to say about a week after the shrimp. It just so happens the way I bought them wasn't any reason. Normally, I would actually start with the fish first, actually, just because I like them to start pooping and creating what the shrimp are going to want to eat. But as far as the tank stuff goes, that's how I set it up. I run a stingray light, so just a you know a lower LED light. It doesn't really matter. We're only growing some moss here, and I run an auto feeder on it. It doesn't feed very much at all. You're better to underfeed than overfeed. When you use fish, you have to feed them enough so that uh, they aren't preying too much on the shrimp. But we've made, if we look down here, we've made an environment. And you can see this is algae on the glass and I don't clean that off on purpose because when you start looking around there's not much algae at all in this tank because they're consuming it. So any algae I can grow, I actually want them, it's kind of a feeding patch, they can come over here and feed on this if they want. But we've got the moss here and I've actually got a pest thing in there, this is bladderwort. I don't like to have it in my moss but I'm not willing to tear all the moss out yet either so it's an unfortunate thing, it's just kind of a pest and you got to take it out and uh, you know, it's it's hard to get out from moss. Um, but it doesn't impact the the snails or anything like that or the, uh, or the shrimp. But what we see here is we've got fish and they're living right next to the shrimp. And you can see we've got cherry shrimp in there and uh, some are buried and things like that. We've also got baby fish. And you can see because the moss has made it so the baby fish can thrive, um, that also means that the shrimp can thrive. And the more surface area you have, the better. So that's why like that sponge is really good. Also this chala wood, that's what that type of wood is there, is really good. You can see there's more babies in the back there. But when it comes to cherry shrimp, females are going to be very colored up, whereas males typically don't have as much color. Now that's a pretty clear male there you can get you can get them with much more color uh, but when you're looking at a store don't choose just all the brightest red ones or you're gonna get pretty much all females you can see there are more fry of the uh, of the uh, platies there but you're gonna get all females if you choose only the brightest and reddest like that's probably a fee, uh, probably a male right there uh, but more color obviously now you can also kind of sex them by the uh, shape of the abdomen on the shrimp. So this is a female here 
and that abdomen there is much bulkier because that's where it stores the eggs when it uh, is carrying them to hatch. Whereas a male, if we can find another male around here, uh, a male is going to be much more slender in that area. Now here's a female and she's actually carrying eggs I believe. Yeah, you can see that little bit of gold color in her, let's see if we can keep zooming in here. That gold color underneath the shell, that's actually a batch of eggs and they'll carry those for about 30 days or so. See how close we can get in here without, uh, oh, we're losing it. That's as close as I can get there, but that's a female carrying eggs. Now, that's going to give birth to maybe 30 babies or something like that. And yes, will the platys eat some of them? Sure. But the goal is to get so many going, when you start looking in here, you're going, wow, that's a lot of shrimp kicking around. And uh, get them really thriving. Now, let me do some moss moving here and see if we can't show more. You know, usually for every shrimp you can see, there's 10 you're not seeing. And here there's a lot of Malaysian trumpet snails. A lot of people think they're going to take too much away from the babies and stuff like that, but as far as I'm concerned, it's all a beneficial ecosystem I've made. And that's the goal, is I'm trying to make an ecosystem where you've got lots of organisms living in harmony and relying on each other because the, you know, things like these Malaysian trumpet snails are eating any undigested food, but when they poop it out, it's the perfect food for the uh, baby shrimp. And you can see, since I rarely ever get in here, they're not even that scared of me because I don't, you know, it's not like I'm hunting them, but uh, shrimp tend to always dart backwards. So when you touch them in the front, they dart backwards. So if you're ever trying to net them, touch them with your finger up front and put the net behind them, and there they go. There's that male, I was one of the males. If we can zoom in on him, you can see how his abdomen, Oh, he's going to land on me. He's on me at the moment. Uh, terrible lighting, but you can see how his abdomen is more slender than uh, the females that had, you know, the eggs. But you can see here how if you had lots of moss, and when you start really looking around, like you start looking back here, if I pull some of this moss up forward, you're going to see more and more babies. And that's the goal. The goal is to create this, this wonderland of moss and things like that and all the surface area so that the shrimp can really thrive and uh, that's that's the goal that's how you do it and so I want to take you over and I want to show you the uh, orange cherry shrimp tank I'm also going to show you the blue velvet tank they're all the same type so blue velvets oranges and cherries are all the same type of shrimp just different color variants now over here, this is, I got these at the same time as I got the reds. Now these haven't been breeding quite as much for me. There's also no auto feeder. So I feed this tank manually and we've got the blues in here and you can see them swimming around. If you look in the moss, there's uh, you know, they're in the moss as well. But the big difference here is the amount of food that's going into this tank. There's less food because it's not an auto feeder, so we've got less moss. You can kind of get a top view up here. You can see they're all kind of swimming around and doing their thing. And I started each tank, each tank started with um, 10 adults, okay? And in here we've got some Japanese rice fish. They're not producing any babies because the shrimp are probably eating their eggs, but this was kind of a quarantine setup and I want to put these outside during the winter or during the summer because it's winter right now. Uh, I also have a bristle nose in here uh, which does not affect raising shrimp at all which is good because shrimp are live bearers. When they do hatch out from uh, the females they're gonna hatch out into just a baby shrimp but that's also what makes them tasty for uh, any, any fish. So I'm trying to see if I have any buried blue ones in here. Like clearly the colony is expanding. There's no doubt about that. There's much more than 10, but it's not as big as the one over here yet. So here we have a 40 gallon breeder. It's got an auto feeder on it. And we keep orange shrimp in here as well as the panda blue guppies. Now for the plants, we didn't use any moss in this one. It's all Anubias, which is this big mass up here. And then we've got Bulbitis, which is an African fern. We also breed plecos in the same tank because it's 40 gallons. So we've got pleco babies. We've got lots of babies for the panda guppies. And we've got lots of shrimp babies. And you can see shrimp are pretty much everywhere. I've got so many orange shrimp. And I put a few algae wafers in here just to bring them out. 
Um, but you can see how all these things are pretty much living in harmony. We've made an ecosystem. And once again, snails are part of this ecosystem. Plants are part of this ecosystem. Um, and yes, are the guppies probably eating some of the, the shrimp fry? Most definitely, I'm sure of it. Um, could it possibly be that some eggs get eaten from snails and things like that for uh, the bristle nose? Could be, but you know, that's how nature does it. Nature is going to put all these things together and we're going to you know, raise some of everything, right? And that's what we've done here. We've got some babies of every type of uh, animal that we have living in here all reproducing, which is a good thing in my opinion. So it helps really digest everything. You know, there's not much algae, there's a little bit of hair algae there, but in terms of the diatom algae they really like on the glass, there's not a speck left just because there's, you can see, where'd that little baby pleco go? Right there, that little baby pleco, he's scrounging around looking for algae. You know, and you can see they're smaller than these shrimp. But that's, that is how I like to breed shrimp and I, I can do it in lots and lots and lots of tanks that's you know there's not too many tanks that don't have shrimp if I look at another tank right over here we've got uh, some guppies I brought in this is a new, stra new strain to me we've got them living here but then we also have shrimp breeding in the tank as well more orange shrimp and you can see there's lots of plants and that's just kind of my general approach give it lots of plants build the ecosystem. If you build the ecosystem right, they will reproduce for you. Um, sometimes when you have, let's say, hitchhikers, like I had some hitchhiker shrimp in here, they're not reproducing nearly as fast because there's not enough cover. So you see here we've got orange shrimp, we've got lots of neon tetras. This is a holding tank for the store. And back there you can see we've got an orange shrimp. Now that's a saddled female, so that orange thing on the back means it's ready to breed. Uh, they're just not breeding yet. Uh, and I suspect it's because there's not really enough cover really in this tank. Now, could I make it that way? Yeah, but then it's gonna be too hard to catch the neons that I'm specifically uh, keeping this tank for. So, you know, you design an ecosystem with a purpose and then you run it that way. I hope that answers your questions on how to breed cherry shrimp. You've seen three different strains of cherry shrimp, the blue velvets, the oranges, and the cherry shrimp. They're all bred in the same fashion for me. They're all bred in community tanks. You can definitely start by keeping them in just their own tank, like let's say a 10 gallon or something like that, and just the shrimp. But realize, I find an ecosystem does much better because if you overfeed a little bit, the snails might help eat that food for you. Uh, also, the snail poop and the fish poop are also beneficial. It helps us break things down more and more and more. And the more stable you can get a system, the better. Now, uh, I have all these tanks on auto water change. They change about 20% once a day or so. You could do that much less. In fact, I've had shrimp tanks that I haven't changed water on in a year before, but my whole fish room here uh, is on a system where it automatically changes water. Uh, but what they want, they want consistency and they want it to be stable. They don't want radical changes. That stops them from breeding. Um, so I try to kind of set it and forget it. Let happen what's gonna happen. Let the algae grow, let everything happen. You know, you can't let ammonia build up or something like that, but anything else that's not technically harmful to them, let it happen and nature will work its way through it. So hope that helps. Check out our other breeding videos. Check out uh, the channel in general. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should. Put out lots of content. If you like this video, go ahead and like it, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more shrimp content, I've got some of the way back content when the fish room is still new. I think it was episode number 14, where I took this uh, orange cherry shrimp colony out from the tank, and it was thousands of shrimp. So uh, I'll put a link up above. It'll be a little card that comes out. You just click on that, and it'll port you right over to that video at about 10 minutes in. It's amazing. It's long, but so as I'm taking the guppy grass out, I'm literally taking some shrimp also. But you know, that's that's a lot of shrimp right there. I mean, that's a lot. I don't know what that number is, but if someone pauses this video and.